everyone. Uh, I'm Wes again. Um, and now I want to talk about off-channel scanning, which is a topic I think that uh, often gets overlooked, uh, but it's an important one nonetheless. So I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm an access point guy. Um, I like looking at the RF, so let's start with looking at some throughput graphs. For any of you, any of you that ever done a throughput test or an iperf test or something and you've noticed every so often you kind of get like a dip in throughput, that dip is actually um, the AP going off channel. So that's the, that's the top graph here. Bottom graph is with off channel uh, turned off and you know, there's, no more, there's no more dips. So why does the AP do that, right? I'm, I'm telling you that your, your, your AP is not always serving clients. It's doing other things. Um, and hopefully, hopefully it's for the greater good. Uh, you know, sometimes it may not be, but usually it is. Um, so how frequently is the AP actually going off channel? Um, so this is the you know, this is Cisco world. Um, I assume it's somewhat similar for other vendors. Um, but basically the access point is time slicing between uh, serving clients and going off channel. So um, for Cisco, kind of default um, interval is AP serves for about seven seconds and then goes off channel for 50 milliseconds and then comes back on channel. Um, and then when it's on channel, if there's no traffic, it may go into kind of like a promiscuous mode where it's, um, you know, in a, it's kind of passive and, and uh, looking at what's going on in the channel. I should point out that um, this is for a client serving. If you have like some sort of monitor mode AP, usually that access point is gonna have a much longer dwell. Um, and so it's gonna spend about a second or 1.2 seconds um, on each channel. How do you configure the frequency um, or how, you know, how, how often your access point is going off channel? So in Cisco world, um, you configure um, which channels get monitored. So by default, it's the channels that are configured for RRM or the DCA channels. And um, the channel scan interval is set to 180 seconds, which means that the access point is going off channel, um, it's going through all the channels in its channel list every 180 seconds. So if you wanna set, um, if you wanna calculate how often your AP is going off channel, you would just take um, the channel scan interval, so in this case, 180 seconds, and divide it by the number of channels. So in five gigahertz in the US, we have 25 channels. So that means the AP is going off channel every 7.2 seconds. Um, if you don't have that many channels configured, so if you're, if you're not using DFS channels, for example, um, so then you could have nine channels. Uh, so the AP is gonna go off channel less frequently in that case. In 2.4, with three channels, AP goes off channel uh, every 60 seconds. So the, the frequency really depends on the band. Now one, one fun fact I'll point out is um, on our uh, dual five gigahertz AP is the 2800 and 3800, uh, the uh, flexible radio actually goes off channel on both bands. So you'll see slightly more frequent uh, off channel scans. Okay, so AP goes off channel. Um, does that impact anything? Does that impact client performance? Usually it doesn't um, for most traffic. However, there are times, especially with real-time applications, voice over Wi-Fi, um, where going off channel for 50 milliseconds can be actually quite impactful. Um, and it's not, it's not, that 50, 50 milliseconds is a little bit of a misnomer because it takes time for the, AP, the radio to tune to the new channel, go off channel for 50 milliseconds, and then it takes time to switch back and tune to the original channel. Um, so it can actually be a little bit more than 50 milliseconds. However, there are, um, there are ways to get around that. So most vendors have some sort of um, scan defer um, where if there's certain traffic types, so by default, um, voice and video traffic, the access point will defer uh, its off-channel scan. Um, and the default um, time that it, it defers is 100 milliseconds. And that's, you know, that's configurable. So what is uh, off-channel scanning good for? Well. Absolutely everything. I'm sorry for the bad, uh, bad joke, but. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, off-channel scanning is, is really, really important. So if we take this, um, this Jenga, you know, this, this Jenga uh, blocks, um, 
And this is like well, this is what I like to do. I like to pull out all the bottom ones, and hopefully it doesn't fall over. But that's off-channel scanning right there on the bottom, right? It's that's kind of the building block that holds everything else up. Without off-channel scanning, many of the functionalities that um, make an enterprise Wi-Fi system, um, you know, give you the features and what you come to expect, wouldn't really operate. So off-channel scanning is crucial. Um, it's how access points discover other access points. So that both um, other access points within the Wi-Fi system and rogue access points. Um, it's how APs get discovered, right? So that's kind of similar, but it's you transmit versus receive. Um, and, uh, and then it's also how the access point uh, discovers Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi interference um, to make decisions based around RRM, for example. So there's two types of um, off-channel scanning, and they kind of they operate you know, simultaneously pretty much. Um, so you have active off-channel scanning where the access point is transmitting. So this would be for things like um, uh, neighbor discovery um, or um, client containment, which you, know, you shouldn't do, but it's you know, kind of built into that functionality. Um, and then there's also passive um, or receive off-channel scanning. And this would be for things like your rogue detection um, and discovering other access points. So what, uh, what uses off-channel scanning? What leverages off-channel scanning? So you have rogue detection. You have all parts of RRM, so the dynamic channel, transit power, um, uh, flexible radio assignment, coverage hole detection. Uh, we have a feature called optimized roaming. 11V messages and 11K, 11V BSS transition and 11K also use um, uh, off-channel scanning. The, the neighbor lists in those rely on off-channel scanning. There's location services, um, you know, clean air or interference detection relies upon uh, off-channel scanning. So off-channel scanning is how RF neighboring works. And all these things rely on RF neighboring. So basically, if RF neighboring is broken, then a large par portion of your WLAN is also probably broken. So let's talk about um, the transmit portion of off-channel scanning. So in Cisco world, that's called Neighbor Discovery Protocol, or NDP. So NDP is how the access points or radios form their RF neighbors. So radios uh, transmit NDP when they go off-channel, and generally they receive NDP when they're on-channel. Uh, that can vary, like, it's all based on probability. So if an AP is spending more time on channel, um, it's most likely to receive an NDP frame. If it's only going off channel for 50 milliseconds, it's probably not going to receive another NDP frame. It's just the way that the math works out. Um, and if, you know, Cisco world, you want to view your RF neighbors, um, a number of ways to do it. Um, easiest way is probably just to look on the CLI, um, and it'll give you kind of the base radio, um, MAC address, which, which radio it actually is, and the channel and RSSI um, that, uh, that are the neighbors. A couple notes on NDP. So NDP is sent um, best effort, right? So in busy RF environments, NDP might not get transmitted because it, there's some other more important traffic that gets sent. So this is, the reason that this is important um, is there's a, um, there's a feature called uh, neighbor timeout and so if you're in a really challenging RF environment, you might want to increase your neighbor timeout because, um, you know, so by default, that's neighbor timeout is, it's a, multi, you know, a multiplying factor. So multiply times five, the channel scanner interval. So 180 seconds or three minutes times five, which is 15 minutes. So if after 15 minutes, your um, AP doesn't he no longer hears a neighbor, it's going to get timed out. Um, if you ever want to sniff a multicast, or if you ever want to sniff um, NDP, it's sent on a multicast address, um, and NDP is always sent at highest transit power and lowest data rate, regardless of radio configuration. So if you're trimming low data rates, it doesn't matter, NDP will still go out at the lowest data rate um, in 2.4 or 5. And then um, NDP allows us to figure out how, as an access point, how I hear other APs, so that's receive, and then how other APs hear me. So it's both portions of the RF relationship. Then my last slide um, is on third radio. So some access points have third radios, um, whether it's a built-in third radio or a modular slot that allows you to add a third radio. Um, however, these third radios are generally receive only. 
so that means while the, that saves the client, the client serving radio from having to go off channel um, uh, much more often, um, it still needs to go off channel to, uh, to transmit um, NDP, for example. And I'm about four seconds over, so uh, thank you very much.